I know which segments I've got. I'm now gonna take the tire, I'm gonna turn it sideways so we can actually see the tread. And I'm gonna photograph this, but I need to have some kind of a scale in here. So what we use for that is the white continuous tape. I find where I've got my indicators and I go just beyond, just beyond the marks that I had there. And I'm going to take this and adhere it as close to straight across the tire as I can. Put one here and another one here. But now I don't know which number that is, what section I'm dealing with. So I get a Sharpie marker and on the top one, I'm gonna write section number one and I'm gonna put an arrow pointing in this direction. And on this one, I'm also gonna write section number one with an arrow pointing up. So when I take my photograph, I know everything in here relates to this section. It's gonna be important that I take my camera and fill the frame as much as I can, which means I don't want my camera in a horizontal or a landscape position because I'm gonna be wasting the megapixels of resolution on either side. In this case, I'll turn it straight up and down. I also have to make sure that my camera is parallel to this surface. Center this so that I can Take a photo from here to here. I would suggest using manual focus because sometimes the camera has a hard time <clears throat> focusing on that black surface. You can leave the camera in automatic, let it figure out what exposure works well for it. And in this case, we're definitely gonna wanna use an off-camera flash and position the flash where we want it to create a shadow, almost a three-dimensional effect. So I'd look through my viewfinder, make sure I focus, camera straight on to the tire itself, get the flash off to the side, take my first photo. In the photo I should be able to see from the scale at the top to the scale at the bottom along with knowing that this is section number one and get a good, good clear photo. If the first one doesn't look good, take two or three. Maybe lighting from this angle doesn't work, maybe a little higher or maybe you want to bring it from the top, but I want an evenly photographed section. I will leave this in this position and then I would rotate this to section number two whichever direction you happen to go. I will take this one off and this one. I'd get some new tape. Now instead of being over here, I'm gonna move into this position. And again, replicating it, this would become section number two. Go through the same procedure. By keeping the camera right where it was, You've got everything cropped appropriately. You've got everything set. Once you start doing this, it goes pretty efficiently. All we do is move this to here, take a photo, rotate it to the next one, put our tape on, take a photo. Rotate it to the next position, take a photo. After I photographed all of the tread, I'll move this back. And I will clean up the tire. To clean up the tire, you can use a rag or you can just put on a pair of gloves and we're gonna wipe the tire down. The purpose is to wipe off the light dirt and debris that we've picked up from the road and inside here. But if there's stones or anything caught in there, if there's a nail, don't pull it out because that may be replicated at your crime scene to begin with. So what we'd wanna do is leave that in there because that may be one of the characteristics that we pick up. So what I would do is just wipe the tire down and I can see I've got something caught in here this could be a piece of uh, tar, this could be a piece of bubble gum, this may be a tire plug where the tire had a flat and they've actually plugged it, which now has created a unique characteristic for this specific tire in that area. I would wipe the whole tire down, and there, this tire happens to be missing a big chunk right here. It hit something sharp at one point, so this unique characteristic in itself can be used to identify this specific tire compared to any other tire that's similar to this.